Let's give the Lord some praise. He is worthy. We're getting ready to move into the greatest victories of our lives. Now, I, I want you to get this. This is a fight of faith. And when I said that, some of you are going through the biggest battles of your lives. And your battle can speak so loud, it can cause you to doubt the power of God. One of the strategies of the enemy is to present himself bigger than your God. There's a story in the Bible, and we've all heard it, of Goliath. And for 40 days straight, he was yelling, intimidating the army of God. It took someone that wasn't being beat down by the message and looking at the size of the giant to come out of being a shepherd back in the woods. He comes out and he's fresh. And he says, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? Those were almost cuss words back in the day. What he was saying is, who is this guy that has no relationship with God talking like that? I've just spent some time praising God, worshiping God, just like we did today. And I'm ready for this giant. My faith is high. Someone say, my faith is high. It's getting higher now. Everybody else was running from the giant. And David, at 15 years old, was running to the giant. When the battle went off, David did not hesitate. He took his, the weapon that he had, which was just a little slingshot with a rock. He had no armor on. And the Bible says that he ran right to him with faith. And he said this, today, he goes, you come with sword, you come with javelins, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's army. And he said this, and he said this, and he said this, and today God's going to deliver you to me. And, uh, and he goes, let's, let's one up that. I'm not only going to kill you, I'm going to take your sword away that you got right there. And then I'm going to cut your head off with the very sword that you're coming against me with. There has to be a time that you stop talking about how big your giants are, how big your problems are, how big your enemies are, how big your sickness is, and start proclaiming because you'll never be in a big... Be, be, win a battle that you're not come on declaring first somebody has to start right now to declare your victory because the enemy's not going to shut up until you shut him up come on let's give god one more praise declaring your victory so we're in we are in war and and i'll tell you this in america we're more in war than we ever have been but i think it's in nations across the world I'm going to have you sit down in a minute, but just relax. <laughs> the, we're, we're taking over a church in Uganda. Uh, they, they just, they finished building during COVID. A 1,500 seat capacity building with 60 churches. But what happened this week in Uganda was devastating only an hour away from our church. I, I don't know. Do you, do you have the pictures of it real quick? Let's see if they have the pictures of it. Did they have it? Okay. But this is what happened. So jihadists came in to a Christian school and burned Christian students alive and hacked them with mach machetes in school attack this week. They killed over 40 of them and cut them into little pieces. This is where we're going as a church. Next month, I'm going to be on that territory. Next month, the way we're is going to be on that territory, okay? But I want you to understand, we're, why would you leave America going into a war zone, especially that they're coming against Christians? 
Because that's exactly what Jesus does. He left heaven and he came into a war zone. Come on, to reach one soul. We, we have, come on, I want you to get this. We got to get battle ready. And we have to understand when we gave our lives to Jesus, we died that moment. Our lives, come on, our old lives were done. And from here on out, we're living for Jesus. And we're going to do everything we can to reach one more boy, one more little girl. They're in the middle of the battle. Why can't we come fresh? Come on, with new, come on, with, with faith, ready to help them overcome their battle. So this is where we're headed. So we're starting a seven-day fast, not only for your personal breakthroughs, but we're, we're starting a seven-day fast for the expansion of the way we're all outreach throughout the world. And I'm telling you, there's, there's, there's devils, there's demons that don't want to let go. Of, they don't want to let go of territory. So we're going to have to come in, fast it up. Because there's some spirits that are, aren't going to be removed until we're praying and fasting. Is there anybody serious enough to pray and fast and say, I know there's a lot of casual Christians. I'm not one of them. I realize the battle that I'm in. I realize the cost. And I'm ready to go to war. Is there anybody that's ready to go to war for your family, for your cities, for your nation? Come on. For another nation? We could talk about how bad the nation is, but this is what I'm telling you. The church has to come back. We have to come back in power. We have to come back dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. We got to come on. We got to come back in faith. We got to come back holy. We got to come back sold out. We got to come back. Come on. We're not going to reach them if we're just like them. God called us out from among them to be separate, to be holy, and declare the message of Jesus. Give God one more praise. Come on. We're going to war. And we have the victory. So let's pray. I got a few minutes. But we'll get the fasting part done. Sunday morning, we'll cover some more. But right now, we're just going to right now start a fast. We're going to get ourselves all together in unity. And if you're, we're united, there's nothing that we can't do on earth. Come on, we can't, there's nothing we can't do if we just get united. How many believe that? If we're united, there's nothing that can stop us. Fasting is a way for all of us to get united and saying this, we're ready for a brand new start. We've seen great moves of God in the Bible and great turnarounds. It looks like there was defeats. A group of people started fasting and the defeats turned into massive victories. There's situations in the Bible like Nehemiah that city was in ruins for right around a hundred years until there was a man that decided to fast and he says, we got to end this city being in ruins. We're going to have a turnaround. And, uh, and in 52 days after a fast, come on, a whole city was rebuilt. Jehoshaphat in the Bible, there was armies coming against him. He was terrified and he says, I'm scared because I'm outnumbered and, and they've just defeated everybody they've come into contact with. They're a massive army that are angry and they're coming. They're knocking on our doors and they're coming to kill us and annihilate us. Jehoshaphat, he's the king, and he decided, he goes, I'm scared. There's nothing wrong with you admitting you're a little scared, but get God. Come on, get the God in your, come on, get the God factor. Get God in the middle of your fight. It's going to be okay. So what they did, they fasted and said, God, we're outnumbered, but I know if you're with us, we can conquer all of them. And that's exactly what they did. They conquered every single army that came against them. This is what we're going to do. We're getting ready. How many understand that? We're getting ready, and we're going to fast. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's going to be quick. But the biggest thing right now is for us to be an army. And I just want to make this one point tonight. We want to be an army that's being led by our commanding officer, Jesus Christ. Our captain. Come on. Our general. And you know what that's called? Being spirit-led. And if we're an army that's spirit-led, this is what's going to happen. You cannot be led by God's spirit and not be led to a victory and not be led to a breakthrough and not be led to the best days of your life. Come on. Is there anybody right now, gonna, you're not going to be anger-led, you're not going to be lust-led, you're not going to be marijuana-led, you're not going to be Bud-led, Budweiser-led, come on, you're not going to be crack-led, you're not going to be, come on, porn-led, you're going to be spirit-led. Is there anybody here? I'm saying I'm done being led by those things is my time father we just thank you for this wonderful night of worship 
And I'm asking you, Lord, to speak to us in these next 10 minutes. Show us about, tell us about fasting. Make it clear to us. We're in a war. We're fighting for the city of Pomona. We're fighting for LA. We need another, we need a campus in LA. They've outgrown the church they're at now. And we, we, we need, we have children's ministry outside a building. There's no, no room for our children in the LA campus. So I just thank you, Lord, for a release of that campus. Those pastors are terrified in Uganda. And I just thank you, Lord, right now you would fortify them through your faith. And, and I, through, Father, you, you give them a measure of faith that they need. And I thank you, Lord, that we could come alongside them. They're in the battle, but we're coming alongside them through the power of your Holy Spirit. And let them know you're not alone. We're here with you. And I just thank you, Lord, that we get to do that. We praise you and we glorify you, Lord. Bless every person that's here. You're a miracle worker. There's nothing impossible for you to, for you to do, Father, in this place. I thank you, Lord, for healing tonight of cancer. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for a healing of chronic sicknesses that the doctors are saying it's just getting worse. I thank you, Lord, that right now as I'm declaring this, somebody right now is receiving healing for a chronic ailment. The doctors don't even know what it is, but I thank you, Lord, you're the great physician. And right now I'm declaring healing right now. Right now, there's someone right now in chronic pain. And I thank you, Lord, the pain is leaving right now in the name of Jesus. And your comfort and strength is here. There's someone that they came in here today and they're suicidal, they're depressed. And I just thank you, Lord, the spirit of depression, the spirit of suicide, I command you to leave them right now under the authority of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill them with your joy. Fill them with your peace. I thank you, Lord, it's happening now. Restored relationships, restored minds. And it's happening now in the name of Jesus. We glorify you. We thank you, Jesus. Restored finances. Freedom from spirits of rejection, spirits of religion, hindering spirits of trying to stop your people from just doing the work of God. I remove you right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Um, church, I want to first of all thank you for being here tonight. We we had a night of worship. The place is packed out. I don't know what we're going to do next week. I'll, I'd advise you to on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday come early because I want you to get a seat. We are going to have overflow for sure. But you want to be here because God is ready to speak to us about our next level, what he's ready to do in your personal life. One word from God can change your life forever. Just get in a position to hear the word of God. Don't let nothing in the world distract you because your destiny is at stake. So we're going to be here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but we're starting a seven-day fast right now. Next Wednesday, we'll end the fast, but today or tomorrow, today, you could start it tonight or you could start it tomorrow. We're starting a seven-day fast. One of the things about fasting is, is, is this, coming back to God. Right now, um, we're, a, we're, in a, we're a nation that's walked away from God. We're almost a post-Christian nation. But the reason we've, the nation has walked away from God because there was a group that walked away before the nation walked away and it was the church. We, we became a church that was more interested in what, it was, what was in it for us. We forgot our mission. We became, we, we became obsessed with entertainment. And we started worshiping Christian personalities like they were Elvis Presley. And we started worshiping churches, worshiping people, and we stopped worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And what ended up happening, we no longer wanted the Holy Spirit in the church because the Holy Spirit made us look funny. But without the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to understand this. No one gets saved, no one gets delivered, and no one gets a brand new start. The only one that can set you free is Jesus Christ through his Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. And no matter what right now you're struggling with, because the power of the Holy Spirit is here, which is God's Spirit, you can be set free tonight. The churches began to be a place that they were okay without the power of the Holy Spirit working. And this is what happens. Demons were no longer cast out. People were no longer healed. The churches looked really pretty, but they were pretty with no power. 
They were pretty with no holiness. There's churches right now that have totally backslidden and have demonic doctrines that are being taught from their pulpits. Instead of, this Bible says in the last days, there'll be this is the condition of the church. They'll have, they'll, 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 they'll have a form of godliness. That means they'll be saying the right stuff. They'll have the way sticker on the back car. They'll have the right t-shirts, but they're going to have a problem. They're going to deny the power that can make them godly. That can make them holy. That can set them free. That can make them powerful. That can make them miracle workers. We are coming back. Come on. The way we're all outreach is not going to be one of those churches. The word of God doesn't change. And this is what Jesus says. I mean, the Bible says God is the same and Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he's done in the Bible, come on, he could do today. He's not changed his morals, his values, his word. All I'm saying, a great thing is for us to repent of our apathy, our worldliness, our lack of love for one another. Repent for the cussing, the compromise, the lying, the cheating, the hustling. The pride and say, look, God, we realize we've fallen away. We've been playing church. And I'm not saying you're playing church. I'm just saying overall, we got to be careful that we're not just going through the motions while people are going to hell and people are dying. Come on, people are suffering. And someone right now is committing suicide and a Christian is right next to them watching Netflix. We've allowed the devil to come into our homes with no resistance. Because there's no word in the home. There's no prayer in the home. There's no worship in the home. It's great to have worship here. But this should be, come on, this should overflow into your living room. This should overflow into your baby's bedroom. And I know right now your baby barely understands. But read him the word. All I'm saying, addiction has entered our home. Porn has entered our home. Great depression has come in and anxiety. And the problem is it's comfortable there. We're going to end this in the name of Jesus. We're fasting. Come on. We're coming back. Come on to the, come on. We're coming back to the standards of God. And when we come back to the standards of God and the mission of God, we're going to start seeing the power of God in a level we've never seen it. Come on. Give God some praise. We're coming back. And Joel 2.2, 2, 2.12, Joel 2.12 says this. That is why the Lord says. It's probably the only scripture I read today. Because Sunday I have to read the rest of them. <laughs> Turn to me now. Turn to me now. And I, I, the reason I'm saying that, there's a voice that tells you not now. There's a voice that will even talk to you right now while you're sitting in the seats and your life right now is miserable. You're hurting. Everything you're touching is dying. It's being destroyed. You're, you're, you have, there's great sorrow in your life, but there's a voice that tells you not now. But the problem with that voice, if you listen to that voice and you speak that voice and you say, okay, not now, this is what's happening. Tomorrow might not be there for you. Look what the Bible says. Come on, church. Turn to me now while there is time. There's one thing that every single one of us don't have an infinity of, and that's time. You got a limited time on this earth. And you do not know when your time is up. Stop playing Russian roulette with your future. And I'm going to say, Christians... Stop putting off what God told you to do. You don't have to be perfect to, this, to do this. You just have to be willing to do this. And if you just say, God, I'm coming back. He'll say, come here, son. Come here, daughter. I was just waiting for this. I got the power. I got the miracles. I got the word. You're not going to depend on your record. You're going to depend on my record. Some of you are trying to do God's part. Your job is just to say yes. 
this is what I'm telling you prophetically. You, this church and the world's going to be surprised who God is going to use in this season. There's people that you just entered into this place. You haven't been here for 19 years. You've been here for 19 minutes. But, but God is saying, I brought you here because I'm ready to change your life. And I'm ready to make your world changer. And you're going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes. And you're going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes. And you're going to say yes. And you're going to keep on saying yes. And I'm going to keep on saying yes. And you're going to see me do great things through you, even though everybody else gave up on you. God has a way of using the least likely to do some unlikely stuff. Amen. Come on. Someone say, while, there, while there's time. Give me your hearts. What does God want? If he could get to your heart, he could get to your kid's heart. If he could get to your heart, come on, he could get to your friend's heart. But he goes, I just want somebody to give. What does God want from you? Your heart. And how crazy that we've given our heart and we've given our will to all kinds of things and people, to even material things. And God says, you love your thing and you love the, the, those, the, the, that, those people more than you love me. And all I'm saying, give me your heart. And if you surrender your heart to me, I'll put everything back together again the way it's supposed to. It's not your job to fix it. It's your job to give God your heart. Give me all your hearts. Give me all your what? All your hearts. I imagine in heaven, they're looking down right now, and God has a lot of hearts here. But he has some heart. There's some hearts in here that he doesn't have. And the whole heaven right now is saying, will you just give me your heart? And if you're going to give God your heart, you're going to have to be willing to pull it from whatever else you gave your heart to. There's some things you gave your heart to. It was an adulterous affair. It was a bad idea. It was a sin that you were solely committed to. It, come on. You, you gave your heart. You gave your life to it. But this is what happened. It's let you down. You know what the devil does? He promises you the world and just delivers you hell. Give me all your hearts. And it says, come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. All he's saying is, let's get serious. We're going to come with fasting now. We're declaring a new chapter in our lives. This is a new beginning. That old compromised life is done with. I'm tired of arguing with everybody. I'm tired of being angry. I'm tired of being emotional. I'm tired of being wishy-washy. I'm tired of being lukewarm. I am done with that. I'm tonight, I'm giving my whole heart to God. And this is my new beginning. And nobody can stop me from giving my heart to Jesus. No drug can stop me. No devil can stop me. No circumstance can stop me. No situation can stop me. Come on. No, no generational curse can stop me. Come on. No social media can stop me. No hater can stop me. Not my past can stop me. I am giving myself to Jesus tonight. Get ready. I'm telling you, we're not. This, this isn't even revival night yet. That's next week. But can you feel already something's happening? There's a move of the spirit right now. Get it ready. So now we're going to fast. And I want you to think about a breakthrough that you need. Now, this is a question. Does God need the, you to fast for him to move? No. Does God need you to fast for your prayers to be answered? No. You need to fast. And the reason we need to fast is because we're careless with prayer, our prayer life. Some of us really haven't prayed for a long period of time. And the prayers that you, you make are like silly prayers. Or they're just eating your Big Mac prayers. God bless this Big Mac. They don't give me a heart attack. <laughs> and then you rhyme. 
And then you tell your kids, you like that rhyme? See, I'm a rapper. Right? God bless his food. And, and, but that's it. When was the last time you went to war for a situation? When was the last time you went to war for a person? When was the last time you went to war for your church? When was the last time you went to war for someone that's bound by the devil and you've been complaining about them and God said you've been complaining about them but that didn't fix it. You got to start praying about them. You got to stop talking about them with, to people and start talking to them about them to your God that could do something about it. Is there anybody here that's ready to really pray this time? So fasting, fasting makes you really pray. When you start fasting, heaven, hell, and praying, hell, there's an alarm. There's a Christian really praying. <laughs> they're, pray they're so serious about their, this prayer, they're willing to not eat to see this prayer happen. In these seven days, God's going to reach some of your kids. In these seven days, your business is going to get a breakthrough. In these seven days, you're going to be set free. Come on, some of you guys are going to be delivered right in your bedroom. You're going to be delivered from spirits that have been hindering you. In these seven days, there's going to be people who get baptized the Holy Spirit. In these seven days, there's going to be miraculous turnarounds of people who get, come on, getting healed. In these next seven days, uh, cities are going to be released. Buildings are going to be released. Come on, come on, what you've been praying for, uh, situations are going to turn around. Judgments are going to turn around. Lo uh, court cases, lawsuits, all of that's going to turn around. God is saying, in these next seven days, if you'll be serious, God is saying this, I'm serious. You guys ready? Does anybody need a breakthrough here? And if you don't, you need one. You just don't know. But spend some time being honest. Because this is for you. God's not saying this is for the, for the people that have been here 19 years. Like I said, this is for someone that's been here 19 years. And it's for someone that's been here 19 minutes. And the reason I said 19 minutes, because you just woke up when I came here. Like, wait a second. The music, what it did, it gave me peace. But now this guy's waking me back up. And I'm starting to realize I've not given my heart to Jesus. I've tried the drug. I tried the boyfriend. I tried the girlfriend. I tried this. I tried that. But I, I'm still empty. But now I just heard if I just come back to Jesus and I give myself to him, I can have the life that I've been looking for. Does anybody want the life that God has for them? Seven days. They're going to do three. three you could do whatever fast you want. First fast is a partial fast. And this is all it means. You fast until a certain time of day. Like you can fast until five o'clock in the day. And then you eat a light meal, like a salad, a soup. You don't go get ding-dongs. You know, whole family-sized pizza, eat it yourself with a liter of Coke. I mean, you don't do that. It's a light meal. You're fasting, all right? Okay. The second fast, so, so that's, a, that's a partial fast. So you might fast to four, you might fast to five, you might fast to six, light meal, and you continue to fast for seven days with water and juices. We're going to get rid of sodas. We're going to get rid of coffee. We're going to get, for, uh, those that drink, we're going to get rid of your alcohol. You're going to get rid of your wine. You're going to get rid of all that, a juice and water. No marijuana. Don't say it's a herb. I just I got to get some oregano. You ain't doing that. Okay? You're going to trust in the Holy Spirit to give you peace finally. And God says, some of you guys are going to get delivered from marijuana. You're going to be delivered from a drug in these next seven days that you couldn't kick. But you're going to kick it now because God, the Holy Spirit, is going to help you stop that thing. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And it's going to start tonight. Someone's wife is coming back. Someone's husband is coming back. Someone's child is coming back. Come on, I'm just prophetically saying it as God's giving it to me. Right now, believe it. I know you got to do it. That's mine right there. Okay. Daniel fast. This is for meat lovers. You love a lot of meat. So Daniel fast, you get no meat. Just vegetables. Now, I understand this. If you're a vegan, you cannot do a Daniel fast. You might have to eat some meat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what, because a Daniel fast for a vegan is what they eat. 
Okay, so, but it's vegetables, nuts, um, no meat, no sugar, um, just water and juice and salads. That's it. No juice? No corn chips. All right, no corn chip. Yeah, we don't want you all of a sudden, yeah, Doritos. That's a, isn't that, in, in that corn and that, that vegetables? Okay, so you got some of you got a scandalous. You try. Also, what, what do you? I mean, all kinds of vegetables. I, I had a nacho cheese. It came from the cows, and that normal right there. All right, let's. And you got to be careful that you don't make a salad with everything in it either. Some of you guys are tricky. Hey, get that filet mignon, cut it up in four or five pieces. Take that bread, <laughs> just cut it like 10 pieces, put it all in here. And put a little salad with it to sprinkle it. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. I just have to help you guys. All right. How many are ready for a breakthrough? Come on. Come on, we're going to put an alarm on hell tonight. Come on, we're going to put an alarm on hell right now. It's freaking out. And then we're going to Pomona. And then we're going to L.A. And then we're going to Uganda. And God is saying, I'm going to go with you. And if I go with you, who's going to be able to come against you? Fasting is just saying this. God, I need your help. All right, let's look at this last one. Liquid fast. If you want to do a liquid fast for seven days, that means water. You could, this is what you could do. Water, fruit drinks, protein drinks, soup, broth for seven days. Now, you pick which one you want. I want to, if you want to do a partial, don't feel guilty. Don't try to compare yourself with anybody else. You just do what God puts on your heart. If you want to do a partial fast, just be careful that you need to try to do a partial fast and, and you're fat, you start your fast. I mean, you start eating at 9 o'clock in the morning and you say, I fasted all night when I slept. <laughs> that's not fair either because you know, I fasted for 12 hours I slept for 12 hours <laughs> okay <laughs> you gotta fast while you're awake too okay so okay so either one liquid fast partial fast or Daniel fast with vegetables but next seven days I want you to write down what you're praying for I want you to spend some time um, get the growth book that we have read your Bible every single day fill yourself with the word of God okay um, um, pray um, even ask God it, what, what we'd have you to give for our, our, our campus. What a great thing that could happen at the end of these seven days or eight days that we have everything that we need for the down payment of a new campus to reach souls that be shut down. That building's basically been shut down over 20 years. Nothing's been happening. We're going to reopen up a soul winning center. People are going to get fed. They're going to be clothed. If we have a men's home with 21 rooms upstairs. People are going to be disciple transformed. And it's our faith putting it together. I'm going to receive something from God tonight. Let's all stand up. I went, oh, Lord. How many feel there's something brewing in here right now? Come Sunday morning. Come Sunday morning. Come Sunday morning. You don't want to miss Sunday morning. God's going to have another prophetic word. Get ready. This word that I gave tonight, God just gave it to me like one minute before I came up here. He goes, this is a scripture. They need to come to me. And this is what we're doing. We're going to come back to Jesus. So now I'm going to give you an opportunity, very, very simple, and I'm going to dismiss in just a second. And if you want, if you want some food tonight, our cafe's open. They got the best chicken wings this side of Wisconsin. It's right over there. They got good pizza. And, and, and right now, if you want to get ready for your fast and you want to be like a chipmunk, go right over there. I love you guys. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I love you guys. What a great church we got. Come on, you guys, you, we're the church. Thank you so much for coming tonight. This is unity. There's not too many churches in America unified like this for a fasting night. A worship night. How many believe God's doing something special? The revival's starting right now. It's, it's happening now. Your family's coming. Come on, your hard heads are coming. It's starting right now. God's ready to do something in you. <coughs> okay, now. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. This scripture spoke to me. God said, turn to me now. And that means I got to turn from to turn to. I got to turn from to turn to. He loves you. If you give your life to Jesus, what does that mean? You come the way you are and be willing to say, God, change me. 
You don't fix your alcoholism. You don't fix your depression. The abuse cycles that you've been under, it just seems one abusive situation after another. You can't fix you. But there's a God that loves you and he wants to help you and he wants to redeem you and he wants to forgive you and he wants to restore you, okay? This is the message of love. He wants to give you eternal life and he wants to do it for you and your house. And God says, I'm ready to reach your house, but I need to give you to give me your whole heart tonight. I'm prophetically saying this. God's saying, I'm giving you instructions. Give me your whole heart and I'll get your whole house. You give me your whole heart, I'm going to get your whole house. I'm going to reach all of them. But I need all of you today. If tonight you're saying, that's me, pastor. I realize time is short. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. But I'm ready to give my life totally to Jesus. I'm ready to give my heart to Jesus. That means my will. God, take over my life. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm ready to serve you, Jesus, with everything I got. If that's you, you're ready to surrender your heart totally to God. And if you're a Christian and you backslid, it's time to come back home. Come back. No one's going to look down on you. You know what we're going to do? Celebrate you. Come on, we've all messed up. Who cares? Who cares? And, and understand this. The devil gets you to sin and then he shames you. But, but the Bible says in Christ, there's no condemnation. There's no shame. He goes, I'm not here to shame you. I'm here, come on, to honor you. I'm here to restore you. And some, there's someone here, you're suffering from mental illness. Tonight's going to be your night of healing. You're going to have to step out and get your healing tonight. It's going to happen tonight in the name of Jesus. Okay, so now, get ready. If you're ready to surrender your whole heart to Jesus, man, I've given my heart, but I, I know I've been holding back. I'm ready to give it all. Are you ready to get radical? Are you ready to go to Uganda with me? Come on. I ready to put your life on the line. So I was like, oh, I don't know. Come on, let's do it. Come on, they have their lives on the line. Come on, let's go out there. America used to be, and probably still is, the number one place where missionaries come from. Come on, there's going to be a revival and an overflow in America, in our inner cities, and also in other countries, starting here. If you're ready to give your whole life to Jesus, your whole heart to Jesus, come with your addiction, come with your depression, come with your pain. Brand new starts are available right now through Jesus Christ. I want you to leave your seat, come up here right now. I want to give my whole heart to Jesus. This is my season. I got to surrender it all tonight. Come on, tomorrow's not guaranteed. This is your moment. I'm ready to surrender it all. Just come forward. Come on, just come forward. This is your moment. Come on, surrender it all. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. The addiction is, you're going to be set free from the addiction tonight. You're going to be set free from the, the cycle tonight. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, come on. Nothing happens until you take action. Nothing happens until you take action. You got to take action. You got to take action. If you stay in your seat, you're, you're in agreement with your situation. There's a time you got to walk out of it. Come on, you got to walk out of your boat. You got to walk out of your comfort zone. You got to walk out of your fear. If you're even thinking I should be up there, get up here. Come on, receive forgiveness. Receive breakthrough. You're a Christian and you've been dabbling in porn. It's time to get rid of that. So I'm done dabbling in porn. I'm done dabbling. I've been flirting. I, I've been cussing. I, I'm done with that. I want to surrender my life totally to God. I've been living a double life. I'm good here, but out there, I act different with my friends. Awesome. All right, let's make sure we got, we got everything covered. They're still coming. Anybody else? Come on, give you. There's still time right now. There's still a moment right now. There's a moment right now. Okay. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. We're all in. We got each other's backs in this thing. Our church is as strong as the, weak, as the weakest link. What I mean by that is everybody matters. We're going to strengthen you. You're going to strengthen others. We're going to do this. Come on, there's people still coming, giving their lives to Jesus. You're starting your fast tonight. You're starting your new beginning tonight. What's been, we're, the, the areas you've been stuck in for years are going to break tonight. You're going to remember tonight. Tonight, I remember tonight, June 20, 20th. I remember tonight. It changed my life. June 20th, 2023. It changed my life. That was the day I started fasting. All right, let's pray. We're going to pray. We're here for you.
okay? You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. We love you so much. Your family. Okay, you're here with us. Freedom is here. Come on, he's still coming. We, we wait a second. But she's, they're both coming. Come on, they're still. We got, how many know? That's someone's son. That's someone's daughter. Someone's been praying for them. Hallelujah. All right, proud of you guys. I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. You're not joining a religion, so you get that. You're entering into a relationship with the creator of the universe and his spirit. So what God wants to do is forgive you. And you're going to open your heart to God. And he's going to come in and fill you with his presence, his spirit, his love, his power, his kindness, his grace, unearned, undeserved. I give it to you. Okay, let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Say this. Say, Jesus, tonight I give you my whole heart. Forgive me for living on my own terms, doing it my way. Those choices have caused me pain, hurt others, depressed me, addicted me. Tonight, I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Make me brand new. I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior. I open my heart. Jesus, come in and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive forgiveness and I forgive everyone that has hurt me. I let it go tonight. And devil, get out of my mind. Get out of my body. Get out of my family. In the name of Jesus, I now belong to God. I'm a child of God. Jesus, I will follow you for the rest of my life. And use me, Lord, to touch others and share your message with my family and friends so they can be saved like me. I'm saved. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. I want to make sure we pray for everybody. God bless you. The chicken's over there. They still got the nachos. They got all that stuff. In it. But there's the last night of that. God bless you. Love you. Chicken wings and all that. You need prayer? Stay right here. We'd love to pray with you for your miracle, for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We love you, church. Sunday morning. Let's make sure you're here. We started the fast together. You can start tonight. You can start tomorrow morning. Love you guys. So proud of you. The breakthroughs that we're ready to get, you'll never imagine. God's ready to do above and beyond whatever you could ask or think. Now that you have surrendered and given God your attention, you sure got his attention. All of heaven is ready to go to work for you.